The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in this zone mode. Hello and welcome to Tampa City Council. I'd like to call this meeting to order. May we have roll call, please? Yes. Carlson. Hertek. Clendenin. Here. Henderson. Present. Vieira. Miranda. Here. Meniscalco. Here. We have a physical quorum. Thank you very much. At this time, uh, we have a request to schedule a public hearing. This will be for January 25th, 2024 at 1.30 p.m. for a notice of intent to suspend the sale of alcoholic beverages pursuant to Land Development Code Section 27-318. Ms. So Johnson Velez, do, is that enough? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> uh, we have a motion from Council Member Miranda to set this public hearing. Second, Second from Council Member Hertak. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That settles that. We have a lot of housekeeping for this agenda. Uh, yes, sir, uh, if you want to uh, begin. All right. Sam Thomas with Development Coordination. Um, the first item that we will be dealing with today is item two, TACPA 2305. They are requesting a continuance to the February 8th public hearing at 5.01 p.m. All right. Uh, we have a request for so continuance moved. for item number two. Second. Uh, we have a motion from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Henderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, sir. All right. Next, we have item three, REZ 2337, requesting a continuance to the March 21st public hearing at 501 p.m. So moved. We have a second. Yes, sir. Do we ask for public comment regarding this? All right, let's get it first a motion to open all the public hearings. So moved. We have a motion from Council Member Miranda, second from Council Member Henderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a uh, motion to continue item number three to March 21st, 2024. We had a second from Council Member Henderson. Is there anybody here from the public that wishes to speak on the <coughs> continuance only? Yes, need sir. To be sworn in. Um, no, it's quasi judicial. Yeah, let's, if anybody is going to speak on any of the hearings tonight, please stand, raise your right hand, we'll swear you in. We'll get it out of the way now. Can you raise your right hand? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Please state your name. Go ahead. Uh, Steve Michelini, representing the petitioner for 7105 Kissimmee. We're requesting a continuance. The staff has given us a date of 321-24 at 5.01 p.m. We're respectfully requesting it. Thank you very much. All right, do we have anybody in the public that is going to, uh, wishes to speak on item number three, just the continuance, just the continuance. Yes, ma'am, please state your name. Good evening, Stephanie Poirier. Good evening. Um, <coughs> I, I pulled this out of my file from the last time Mr. Michelini was here and asked for continuances. Um, it looks like in the last, uh, up until June, I'm sorry, but the clerk's office doesn't currently publish the evening, the old evening agendas. We don't have access to them right now, or I'm just not smart enough to find them. But this is in the last year. This is the second time that he's asking for a continuance on this. Let me tell you how upset the neighbors are because they were all prepared to be here tonight. They were all prepared to be here the last time that he brought it up. And it's my understanding, I could be wrong, somebody on staff can confirm or not, that the reason why he is not coming, moving forward is because he's unprepared, because things aren't ready to be fixed between first and second reading. I mean, at what point does this get to be absolutely a waste of time? Somebody who actually had their ducks in a row could have been here tonight getting something heard. That's a lot of times, and that's only through June. Let's, let's be realistic. I'm for the continuance tonight because I told my folks to stay home. This isn't fair. It isn't fair to you. It isn't fair to everybody else who comes here prepared. This is ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this continuance, the continuance only? I don't see anyone. I don't have anybody registered. Uh, who made the motion to continue? Council Member Clendenin with the motion to continue. Do we have a second? And this is to Jan uh, March 21st, 2024. Right. Second from Council Member Miranda at 5.01 p.m., 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602, United States. 
Found in July uh, 15th. Earth. Ignored Earth. America. Yeah. <laughs> City of Tampa Incorporated, July 15th, 1887. All right, we have a motion and a second. Yes, sir. Just a reminder for the record, this is continued from October 12th, 2023. This is the second continuance. Thank you very much. Sir, All in favor? Me, I'm sorry. Not accurate. No? This, this is a new filing. This one is a new filing? Number three. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, it is a continuous. Sorry. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, Councilman Carlson. Yeah, but the st the first continuance was a continuance by staff. Does that make a difference to our rules? It, it does. It, I mean, do we it, count it, this as his? If if he did, if the applicant did not make an, a, a continuous request the first time, does that count as? Does this count as their second time or their first time? Well, I'll take a look at that, but I don't think the rules make a distinction about who continues it, if the way, at least the way it's, it's written. If that's a concern, we can take a look at that. But right, certainly, certainly, when the time comes, if this is, or whatever the third continuance is, there's always the opportunity for mitigating factors that can be brought before I It would be great if somebody could give us an answer to that, just, yeah. so, just so they know. I'll give you an answer by the end of tonight. Okay, thank you. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the item has been continued. Next up. Item Council. number, thank you very much, sir. Merry Christmas. Item number 12. Yes, REZ 2374 is requesting a continuance to the January 18th public hearing at 5.01 p.m. All right, we have a request to continue. Item number 12, REZ 23-74. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak on the continuance only? We have no one. May I have a motion to continue item number 12? So moved. We have a motion from Councilmember Clendenin. Second from? Councilmember Miranda, this will be um, continued to January 18th, 2024 at 5.01 p.m., 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, 4 to 3302, <coughs> third floor. Mr. All in favor? Mr. Mr. Chairman, did you ask if there was anybody with regard to? I did. You did. I'm sorry. I missed that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Item number 12 has been continued. 13, 14, and 15 are missed notices. Can we take them as a group, or do you want them one by um, one? I would like to touch on item 13 just Go for ahead, a moment. Sir. Um, REZ 2352, item 13. Um, this item was on the November 9th public hearing agenda, and it requested a continuance to the public hearing today, December 14th. Um, since that happened, it was discovered that the applicant actually misnoticed on the November 9th public hearing, um, so that is why it cannot be heard tonight. So move to uh, remove from the agenda? Yes, please. All right, we have, we have a motion from? At me. From Council Member Clendenin. Second. Do we have a second? Second, Council Member Miranda. This is to... Uh, remove this item number 13 from the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, item number 14, sir. <coughs> item number 14, um, BAC 2321 is a missed notice and cannot be heard. Please remove it from the agenda. All right. So moved. We have a motion Second. from Council Member Clendenin. Second. Second from Council Member Henderson. This is for item number 14 to remove from the agenda due to a missed notice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Item number 15, same thing, sir. Yes, REZ 23101 is a missed notice. Please remove it from the agenda. So moved. We have a motion from Council Member second. Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number 15 is gone out of as a missed notice. And item number 16, we have a, a request to withdraw. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. Please remove it from the agenda. We have a motion from Council Member Miranda to withdraw item 16. Second, second from Council Member Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then right. lastly, um, we have a request from the applicant for item number 11, REZ 23109. The applicant has requested that their item be heard directly after item 1, TACPA 2316. Uh, would it be the pleasure of council to accept this request? Do we have any uh, objection to hearing item number 11 right after number 1? No. Hearing none, we will do that. Um, we don't need a motion to approve the agenda. We're all set. Maybe we'll get out of here by 8 o'clock tonight. No, Crossing my fingers. <laughs> high hopes, high hopes. All right, item number one. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. I'm here to present on item number one since it is a plan amendment. It is TACPA 2316. These are two folios located northwest of the intersection of North 46th Street and East Whiteway Drive. This is a privately initiated request before you tonight. It's small scale at about 6.48 acres from heavy industrial to community mixed use 35. It is in the University Planning District in the Terrace Park neighborhood. It's also within the Tampa Industrial Park. 
Here is an aerial of the subject site. We have East Fowler Avenue, so it's just south of East Fowler. It's on the um, west side of North 46th Street. Um, we have some industrial uses, but we also have some residential just to the north of the subject site. And uh, Fowler, East Fowler Avenue has a variety of residential uh, commercial uses. So we have some site pictures. This is looking west on North 46th Street facing the subject site. Looking west again facing the subject site. This is the, some of the surrounding area, the industrial uses in the surrounding area. Facing west. <laughs> and the adopted future land use map. So the black, almost black colors, heavy industrial. So as you can see, that's the predominant future land use category in this area, this is the Tampa Industrial Park. The pink, these community mixed use 35 pieces, have, those have been plan amendments that have come in over the last couple of years. We also have light industrial along East Fowler. The blue is public. And then we have um, residential tent to the south. And the proposal would amend this to community mixed use 35. As you can see, that's the same request right to the north. It was a plan amendment, I believe, in 2015. So this would allow residential dwelling units on the subject site. The heavy industrial does not permit any. So um, right now, there's no dwelling units permitted. It would allow the potential of 226 dwell units or possibly even more because the community mixed use 35 category there's a little bit more flexibility with using FAR or um, dual units per acre. And so it does have the potential to introduce residential uses. The Planning Commission voted consistency on this, but if you read the staff report, you'll notice that Planning Commission staff found it inconsistent. So in the Planning Commission vote, these were the um, policies that they specifically um, pulled out um, in their vote that's in the resolution. So the Planning Commission in their discussion and in their vote found that it was consistent with our policies on the city planning strategy as well as our mixed use corridors and centers since this is going to be providing more mixed use for the um, this area of the city with that the planning commission um, has a recommendation of consistency here before you um, i'm available for any questions and i know um, evan johnson here from the city i don't know if his a presentation or not no presentation but um, their comments are included in your packet all right, any questions or comments for Ms. Malone? Nope, thank you very much. Next. Applicant, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. If I could get some help with my presentation, please. All right, it'll be coming up shortly. Thank you. Uh, Jake Kramer, for the record, I'm going to do my best to uh, help you make that 7.30 uh, uh, conclusion tonight. We said 8, but 7.30 is good. 401, 401 East Jackson Street, number 2100, with Stearns Weaver Miller. Um, council, uh, as you all know, uh, we have paired, uh, paired comprehensive plan amendments, so we'll talk about the comprehensive plan and the overall set and setting in this hearing, next hearing, then we'll really get into the nitty-gritty to the extent you'd like to talk about that in the rezoning. Um, I think this is a, a fairly straightforward request uh, to uh, to add, um, add add more residential to an area that really needs it near the university. And I think uh, uh, we have the community support for that, uh, looking at organizations like Moffitt and Soaring City that are supporting this uh, application. So with that, I'm just going to turn it over to our ASCP planner, Tina Eckblad, to walk you through the details. Thank you. Thank you, Council, for the record. Tina Eckblad, Director of Planning with Stearns Weaver Miller. Um, I think you have a good foundational understanding of the case, so I'm going to dive right in with just some additional uh, conditions regarding the property and its history for your consideration. Um, if I could, there we go. Um, the request tonight is to go from heavy industrial to community mixed use 35. And that is based upon a little bit of what I consider to be a disconnect between what is on the ground on the existing property and also the surrounding area and the future land use. 
This is within the Tampa Industrial Park, which was platted back in 1958. Um, at that time, there was um, significant investment in rail in the area providing logistics and movement for these industrial uses. But in the 65 years since, uh, those rail lines in the vicinity of our property have been either released or removed um, and are actually part of a broader redevelopment strategy that is occurring in the area. Um, so at one point in time, it made sense for this to be heavy industrial, but as was pointed out, there have been several land use amendments that have promoted uh, mixed use categories in the area. And what we're seeing with the existing businesses on North 46th Street is they're actually more commercial in nature than they are industrial. Um, with regard to our specific property, um, it used to be part of a much larger parcel identified on the screen here in red. That parcel was developed in 1965 with a large warehouse as part of the redevelopment of the airfield. Um, but what you'll notice through time is the eastern portion, which is before you tonight, has remained vacant. It does hold um, supporting infrastructure to that warehouse in terms of access and also dry retention to the south. And that existing infrastructure constrains the site to about five and a half developable acres. When we look at industrial um, and the turning movements and footprint that's needed to support industrial uses, that five and a half acres just is not adequate. And so the request before you tonight to CMU 35 would promote basically a, a, an infill of an underutilized site. And as you'll hear during the zoning application, we are proposing multifamily residential. Um, that would also promote um, interconnectivity between North 46th Street that is better than industrial development and supportive of those existing uh, public improvements. As you may know, industrial uses are required to um, shield themselves from the public with a six foot wall, whereas mixed use and multifamily promotes that interconnectivity with the street front. Um, within the larger area, we are in the University District Overlay and the Green Technology Corridor, which of course is to promote not only mixed use, but support the employment center of the city. We know that's working from the Fowler Visioning Study. Uh, the population of this area actually increases by over 30% each day with employees coming to the area. Um, that would go down if we could provide more housing in the area for those employees and release <coughs> relieve some of the stress on the transportation network. That is reflected in your policies regarding the green technology corridor. There is an incentive for mixed use development to occur without a plan amendment. Unfortunately, one of the criteria is that rail um, be available with transit stops. And as we know, that has not come to fruition. So the proposal tonight to go to CMU 35 would um, meet the intent of those policies without the uh, light rail that was intended back when that amendment was processed. Um, and so uh, in considering your eight o'clock deadline, uh, it is my professional opinion that our, <laughs> our request is consistent with your comprehensive plan. I am happy to answer any questions about the specific policies in front of you, but I, I won't belabor the point. Um, it is also my professional opinion that it is appropriate to take this constrained site and convert it from heavy industrial to a mixed-use category. Um, one other item that I would note is that we have had some extensive community outreach. Uh, we hosted our own meeting. We attended several meetings um, for the Terrace Park community as well as for the Fowler Visioning Study. In all of those instances, we were very upfront with the fact that we were doing multifamily on this parcel and attempting to solicit feedback from the residents and, and community organizations. We also have um, multiple letters of support and have met with the Soaring City Innovation Partnership and they are supporting our request tonight. Um, and so with that and a unanimous consideration from the Planning Commission of finding the application consistent, we would respectfully request your recommendation of approval and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? No, thank you very much. Mr. Kramer, do you have more? No, that's all. I just want to let you know we have representatives of the landowner, developer, and Bowler Engineering here if you have any questions. All right, thank any you. questions or comments before I ask for public comment on item number one? This is the text amendment. All right, I see no one. Is there anybody registered? I have no one on the list. We have a motion to close from Council Member Clendenin. We have a second from Council Member Henderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Council Member Miranda, would you mind reading item number one? 
Not at okay. all, Mr. Chairman. What a minute, yeah. Item number one, file number TACPA 23-16. Orders being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance uh, amending the Tampa Comprehensive Plan future land use element, future land use map for the property located at folio number 140515.1214 and 140515.1216 from Harvey Industrial HI to Community Mixed Use 35 CMU 35 providing for repeal of all ordinance and conflict, <laughs> providing severability, providing an effective date. We have a motion from Council Member Miranda. We have a second from Council Member Vieira. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just want to explain my vote. Um, generally speaking, I do not vote to take um, <laughs> industrial land out no. of the city, but in having a, but in uh, understanding the ownership of the parcel next to it, knowing that only five and a half acres are usable, there wasn't a, uh, and knowing that the the folks who own the the where work the warehouse next door may keep their idea is to keep it a warehouse so there wasn't really the ability for someone to come in and maybe expand both sites i i am supporting this um i think it's a good use of this little empty space so i just wanted to let folks know why thank you very much anybody else um roll call vote carlson Hertek? Yes. <clears throat> Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on January 11th, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. located at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. We'll now jump to item number 11, which is the companion uh, rezoning. Yes, sir. Right. Agenda item number 11 is REZ 23109, a request to rezone folio numbers 14.0515.1213 and 14.0515.1215 from a heavy industrial to plan development for multifamily and commercial parking. I do have a revised revision sheet that was um, given to the applicant and I have copies for council members as well. Um, I'll turn it over to Jen with the Planning Commission now. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. I don't have too much to show as far as maps on this one since we just went over the site. But again, um, here it is located on an aerial just south of Fowler. The uh, future land use is going to reflect as heavy industrial on this map, but as you all know, it'll be community mixed use 35 based on the action that you just took a few moments ago. So with the zoning, um, the Planning Commission staff did find it consistent with the plan. We did find that the design um, met certain um, things that we're looking for in our mixed use areas, uh, the pedestrian safety, the internal pedestrian connections. The design also has the walk-up units. All of those things, we have a lot of policy direction to support. Um, we also found that it was uh, would pr promote many of the um, housing policies that utilizing vacant or underutilized land. And as you know, this is a vacant site. So that concludes my presentation. The rezoning is consistent with the plan, and I'm always available for questions. Thank you. All right. Any questions or comments? No. Yes, sir. All right. We'll start with the aerial map. Um, I won't spend too much time going over the site since you guys are pretty familiar with it, but you have the site here on 46th Street outlined in red. It's just south of Fowler Avenue. On the other side of Fowler Avenue up here, you have the University <coughs> of South Florida, and then you have Mosey here. Um, as was said, um, the area was heavy industrial uses mainly, but it has transitioned over the past few years. You have a multifamily development recognized under a planned development just to the north of the site. You also have them west of the site here and here. Um, there's additionally some multifamily farther south from the site, and then you have some single family detached. Um, the warehouse is directly west of the site, and there are a few other small warehouse um, uses remaining. Down here you have the Moffitt Cancer Center. And here is the site plan provided by the applicant. So the first thing I'll touch on is kind of how the site functions. As you can see that there are two drive aisles here. 
This first drive aisle is the main access for pedestrians, either vehicularly or pedestrians walking. This second drive aisle that's on the northern end of the site is the existing drive aisle that is currently on the site that is used to access that industrial warehouse to the west. So this is where the commercial parking is being proposed. That commercial parking is solely for employees. It is not to be used for industrial vehicle parking or large trucks that would be serving this warehouse. And they have um, made that a condition on the site plan in the general notes section. Um, the building is oriented toward North 46th Street with the parking garage screened in the rear. Um, additionally, as Jen mentioned, um, at staff's request, uh, the applicant worked with us and did add some walk-up units on North 46th Street to provide some activation for that area. And there's also pedestrian connections to the main um, residential entrance to North 46th Street, along with the pedestrian trail kind of sneaking around the outside of the site and along the retention pond. And let me show you some elevations of the site. These are the proposed elevations. So this would be looking from Fowler Avenue. This would be looking for if you were standing in that existing drive aisle with the warehouse behind you. And then you have your north elevation and south elevation as well. I'll walk you through a few pictures. Um, so this is along North 46th Street. The subject site is here on your left. This is kind of looking on 46th Street over the fence. This is all the subject site here. You can see some of the multifamily to the north of the site. Here's a better picture of the multifamily. This is also looking south along 46th Street. Your subject site is right here. This is internal to the site, looking south. You can see the warehouse here. And there's a better view showing that existing drive aisle that'll be used and remain on site so that there can be access to the warehouse. Um, this is looking east across the street, 46th Street. This is one of the office buildings in the heavy industrial use area. And this is that existing drive aisle that'll snake back behind the warehouse for loading and unloading. And this is just a view of the multifamily to the north of the subject site. site plan back up. Uh, development coordination and compliance staff reviewed the application and find the request consistent with the land development code. The proposed use of multifamily and commercial parking are consistent with the development pattern in the area and the proposed PD will allow for the development of the vacant parcel while retaining the off-site warehouse. If City Council approves the application and the modifications to the site plan as shown on the submitted revised revision sheet must be completed between first and second reading. I'm available for any questions. Any questions? Nope. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, applicant, yes, sir. Uh, thank you. If I, <clears throat> if I could have the same presentation back up here, please. All right. And while that's coming up, uh, Jake Kramer, 401 East Jackson Street, number 2100, Stearns Weaver Miller. Um, <clears throat> Council, I think this is a, a, a really uh, great project because we worked hard with staff to get to where we are. Uh, and we made sure we were balancing safety with the industrial use next door. That's obviously important. And then facing the street front, we really worked hard with staff to look at where the Fowler Street visioning study is, is headed and where this area is going. And so we really wanted this to be um, a showcase project for this area as it transitioned in, in, into more mixed use. And so with that, I'll have Tina walk you through the uh, site plan quickly. Thank you. Evening yeah. council members again, Tina Ackblad, director of planning with Stearns Weaver Miller. I again think you have a, a good foundation here for the plan development, so I just have a few items um, of additional consideration. Uh, the first being regarding the site plan that you see here on the screen, we are adding a new access point for the, the residential uh, vehicular access to the property that goes directly into the new parking garage. As was noted, the existing northern driveway will be for the truck access and employees going to that existing warehouse. There is, in addition to this vehicular access along the um, western property boundary, which is the top of their screen, there are other points of access for employees and doorways and such into that existing industrial warehouse that are maintaining clear through this site. Um, we also demonstrated in this graphic um, are maintaining the dry retention and we've proposed a pervious path throughout the development to provide passive recreation in addition to the active amenities that will be on site. 
Um, and so just so you can get a feel for how the proposed development works with the existing warehouse, we've overlaid that onto an aerial here. Um, for your um, reference, it is a five-story structure. Um, the square footage that is being proposed does meet the 1.0 FAR for a single-use facility. That'll equal about 290 units. We did ask for two waivers. The first waiver is in two parts. We are asking to reduce the buffer, again, to accommodate that existing industrial access point. The required landscaping plantings associated with this buffer will be provided, so we'll still be shielding that building appropriately. It's just the width of the buffer will be reduced. And then part B is to eliminate the wall on the western and southern property boundary. Again, we want to maintain the existing access that we have. A wall would be counterintuitive to that. Also, with the common ownership, um, we don't feel that it's necessary to the west. And in terms of the southern property boundary, we have a significant separation as well as existing mature vegetation that will provide that screening instead. Um, the other buffer is regarding the, uh, excuse me, the other waiver is regarding the green space, which is a 14% reduction. That is based on the fact that uh, this is a mid-rise apartment complex rather than a traditional residential subdivision. Um, the code does not allow us to consider the dry retention, the pervious, excuse me, the imper, I said it right the first time, the pervious path around the development and other areas that are open and green and, and planted. Um, and so that is what is necessitating this reduction. If you were to take all of these areas along with the buffers in vehicular use, we would exceed the green space. And I think, yeah, this image shows that dry retention area and how it is landscaped. We will be improving the sod in that area as well as the existing mature vegetation to the south. Um, you've heard a lot about the surrounding uses. Uh, we touched on the community involvement as well as all the elements of the comp plan already. If you have specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, that concludes my presentation and we would respectfully request your recommendation of approval. So you have 290 units total? Yeah, yes. And are any dedicated to affordable or workforce housing or is it just market rate or is it, how's the setup? Just it's currently all market rate. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions from council members? Nope. Thank you very much. Do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number 11? Uh, let me make sure. All right, we don't have anybody registered. We have a motion close from council member Clendenin, second from council member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Council member Vieira, this is your district. Sure. Um, and the revision sheet. Yes, sir. Uh, happy to move an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of west of North 46th Street, folio numbers 140515-1213 and 140515-1215 in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification, IH, industrial heavy to PD, plan development, residential, multifamily, mid-rise, and commercial parking, providing an effective date with the revision sheet. Second. We have a motion from Council Member Vieira, second from Council Member Miranda, Council Member Clendenin, you'd like to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, one, this is exactly the type of, I, I really appreciate the design element, I appreciate the street activation, um, the density of development uh, with going up with the five, it's completely within the, the vision of Fowler Avenue, the redevelopment, it's a major transportation corridor. Um, what's coming along that corridor with USF redevelopment of Mosey, the stadium development, and what we're trying to do with BRT, it fits into the equation of, of increasing density along this area. And I hope that other um, uh, folks and other developers that are watching this take a cue from what you've done. So when they bring projects like this, it, it is more reflective of this type of program. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a motion from, oh, yes, ma'am. Um, thank you. And I actually just wanted to echo it. Um, council member, um, uh, it's been a really long day. Clem Denon <laughs> said, um, yeah, I just had to go through a bunch of, um, just amazing, though, guys. yes. Uh, and it, the inclusion of the front facing units, the addition of the, um, pervious surface, um, walkabout, especially for, you know, dogs and things like that. People want to get their exercise and exercise their pets. Uh, and I love the enclosed garage. I think again, like, like council member Clendenin said, a, you know, when, when developers do good, we want, I want to, we want to make sure to highlight it so we see more of projects like that. Thank you. Uh, may I have a roll call vote? 
Hertek? Yes. H Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on January 11th, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. located at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Item number four. St. Thomas Development Coordination. Agenda item number four is REZ 2332, a request to rezone 2501 East Fowler Avenue from commercial general and commercial intensive to plan development for residential multifamily, restaurant, restaurant drive-in, and office business or professional. I'll turn it over to Jim with the Planning Commission now. Thank you very much. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. We are still on Fowler in the university area of the city. So we have the University Square Mall just in the north of the subject site. And then further east, we have um, a little bit of USF in the area. Um, this has been developed with residential uses directly to the east where it's being currently uh, actively constructed. Um, and then we have some residential to the south of the site. So the request is converting, as Sam Thomas will go into later, a um, hotel into residential development. That is supported by the comprehensive plan, conversions of non-residential uses along our transit corridors to support transit usage. So we have policies that support the exact request that's before you today. Um, we did find that they were meeting the, the mixed-use policies as much as... Um, you know, it's it's existing, and then there's the, the drive-through being added, and given the constraints of the site, Planning Commission staff found that they were meeting those design policies with the pedestrian connectivity. Um, so again, the future land, and I'm, I just jumped right into my analysis, and I skipped my future land use maps, <laughs> I apologize. It's Community Commercial 35, which is along Fowler Avenue, and to the north is University Square Mall. This is actually the jurisdictional boundary between the city and unincorporated county, so everything kind of north of this line is an unincorporated county. So this is a county land use ICMU 35. But it's consistent with the underlying land use of Community Commercial 35, um, which encourages this type of use, and they're within their density set out by the future land use category. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions? No, nope. thank you very much. Yes, sir. I won't spend too much time um, on the aerial because Jim covered it pretty well. Um, you can see the site here on Fowler Avenue. As Jen mentioned, this is a multifamily. Within this section of Fowler Avenue that you're seeing right now, this is the only multifamily currently existing on Fowler Avenue. You do have some additional multifamily to the south that then transitions into residential single family detached. As Jen noted, you have um, USF over here, a few parcels along Fowler Avenue to the north that are within the city of Tampa, then you get into the University Mall um, and unincorporated Hillsborough County. Um, let me show you the site plan now. So um, the applicant is proposing to convert this existing hotel structure into 116 multifamily units. They're also proposing to retain a 3,000 square foot office and an 8,000 square foot restaurant that currently exists in the hotel. Um, they are also proposing the drive through restaurant that is on the eastern portion of the subject site. Um, there are, as Jen mentioned, there are pedestrian connections to the office, um, restaurant, and drive-in and multifamily, all connecting them to Fowler Avenue. The applicant is um, requesting a reduction in parking from 334 parking spaces to 239. Um, that is a 28% reduction. I will now show you some of the elevations. These are the elevations for the proposed drive-in restaurant. Um, and then there are some pictures since the hotel is existing. The applicant has provided a few photos of the existing hotel. And I also have some photos to show you all. So this is looking north from the subject site. This is Fowler Avenue and the University Mall across the street. This is internal of the subject site. This is the existing hotel here, Fowler Avenue and University Mall across the street. This is looking south from the subject site, the existing hotel structure, and then the parking lot surrounding the area. 
This is looking southwest on the other side of the building. This is looking east, so this is the cross connection that would be proposed to connect the hotel and the multifamily that is currently being built to the east of the subject site. And here's just a little bit better picture. Um, this is the current signage for the hotel. And you can see there's a pedestrian connection as well. And then this is looking, Fowler Avenue is running over here, so this is looking west. Um, this is the, re the existing restaurant here, and then you can see some of the um, hotel units that are currently existing. And here is the site plan again. Uh, development coordination and compliance staff reviewed the application and find the request to be inconsistent with the land development code. See the findings from transportation and development coordination relating to the parking waiver. Notwithstanding staff's finding of inconsistency, if City Council approves the application, the modifications to the site plan as shown on the submitted revision sheet must be completed between first and second reading. These revisions will not resolve the issue of staff's findings of inconsistency. I'm available for any questions. Any questions? Thank you very much. Do we have an applicant for item number four? I know we have a few registered online. Ava Russo and Michael Hoffman. Those might be the applicants. I believe yeah, those I are the applicants. Applicants representative. I don't know. Are they, is there anybody online for four? Oh. Hello? Should, Can you hear me? should be the representatives. Wait, we hear somebody. Um, if you are online, okay, we see your face. Can you please raise your right hand and we'll swear you in? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Please state your name. Hello. Um, my name is Ava Russo. I am an EI working under the responsible charge of P. Michael Hoffman, and I will be representing the applicant as well as advanced engineering. We are requesting to rezone the 4.9 acre property from CGCI to a planned development to allow for a change of use from an existing 116 unit hotel and restaurant to a 116 unit multifamily apartment building, restaurant, office space, and drive in restaurant. The existing hotel rooms will be converted to apartment units, and the existing restaurant space will be divided into both a restaurant and office. Additionally, a drive in restaurant is being proposed to the northwest. Being that this area is rapidly growing and in close proximity to the university, we do believe that multifamily units would be a great addition to this area. The property has a future land use of CC35, which allows for up to 30 dwelling units per gross acre, as well as um, a little over 216,000 square feet of commercial space. The property is proposing 24 dwelling units per gross acre to match the existing conditions and a little over 14,000 square feet of commercial space, which is under the maximum allowable. The primary access has been relocated to the east side of the property per FDOT recommendation, um, and a cross access has also been provided to the east. We are requesting five waivers, um, including a parking reduction, a drive aisle width reduction, um, landscaping buffer reduction, and vehicular use space requirement reduction. Since this site is a conversion, the waivers are needed in order to meet the existing site conditions and avoid a redesign. It should be noted that overall, we are providing more green space than what is currently there. Um, per staff recommendations, there are minor updates to the master plan that will be made before between the first and the second reading, which include natural resources and site plan updates, as well as updates to the parking waiver, which will reduce the waiver from 37% to 28%. It should also be noted that since the development is located in a commercial corridor, it's expected that many of the residents and the consumers will be walking, which will reduce the need for ample parking. Um, and additionally, being that two of the four uses operate under specified hours, sufficient parking will be available outside of those hours of operation. Um, aside from these recommendations, the staff has found this development approvable and we kindly request your approval as well. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Hoffman, do you wish to speak as well or no? If you do, I need to swear you in. I didn't, I didn't see you raise your right hand by the time your camera came on. You're good? All right, thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, ma'am, Council Member Hurtak. Uh, I, I just have a comment. I, I think the reuse is very creative. Um, yes. I love the way that they're taking a hotel and making it into, basically, it seems probably gonna be like single resident occupancy. Student yeah, student, studio type housing. And it's just, it's creative and it's, it's, it's what we need a little bit more of. 
Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on this item? We have motion to from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Council Member Henderson, item number four. Yes. Thank you very much. This revision sheet. Yes, and yes. please include the revision sheet. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I move file number REZ 23 32. An ordinance being presented for first reading consideration and ordinance rezoning the property in the general vicinity of 2501 East Fowler Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification Commercial General to CI Commercial Intensive to PD Plan Development Residential Multifamily Restaurant, Restaurant Drive In, and Office Business Professional Effect providing an effective date. Second. Any With the revisions. Please. Yes, ma'am. We have a motion from Councilmember Miranda, second from, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Henderson, second from Councilmember Miranda. We're dragons, but I am a girl. Yes. Dragon one and dragon two, all in favor? Okay. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. yeah. Shall we do roll? Yeah, let's do roll call. I'm sorry. Sure. Yeah. Clint Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on January 11th, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. located at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Item number five. St. Thomas Development Coordination. Agenda item number five is REZ 2370, a request to rezone 7212 South Sorrell Street from residential single family 50 to residential multifamily 18. I will turn it over to Jen with the Planning Commission now. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Good evening, Council Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission. This is located in the South Tampa Planning District, specifically in the Port Tampa City neighborhood. Um, it is within Evacuation Zone A and the Coastal High Hazard Area. I will briefly show an aerial. So we are east of South Sherrill Street, south of West Ingram Street. Um, this area is interesting. I'm, Sam will probably go into more detail, but there's a church on the street as well as some um, vacant lots and residential, but then we also have some industrial uses kind of all around here. So that <laughs> pattern follows when you look at the future land use. The future land use of the site is residential 35, but we have light industrial to the north and then residential 10 to the south. So residential 35 um, allows for um, a variety of residential uses and it really promotes like more higher density residential uses. It's 35 dwelling units an acre. That's where we start to see more of our attached single family, more of our multifamily type uses. Um, so the planning commission staff did find this consistent with the plan. Um, the subject site is on the periphery of a neighborhood and the plan encourages these types of uses to be limited to the periphery. Um, and due to the presence of the residential, I'm sorry, the place of religious assembly to the south and industrial uses along West Ingram Street, um, we didn't find any compatibility concerns with the requested RM18 before you tonight. Um, it's also consistent with that underlying future land use category. And this would be encouraging new housing on vacant and order utilized land to promote um, housing for all of Tampa's growing population. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Sam Thomas Development Coordination. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, so as Jen mentioned, this area is um, a bit interesting when it comes to the development pattern. Um, you do have a lot of these heavy or light to heavy industrial uses that are mainly found like north of Ingram in this section and then dip down a little bit as you move to the west and then are mainly found north of Bradley Street. As you move south of um, Ingram Street and south of Bradley Street, the main development pattern is single family detached. As you move to the east, you do have a mix of some commercial and multifamily uses in this portion, especially along Kissimmee Street. Um, directly around the subject site, as Jen mentioned, you do have two vacant parcels, and then you have a um, local historic landmark, the old St. Mark's Community Aid Center here, and directly across the street, you have the church that Jen mentioned as well. Um, these PDs that you see down here are single-family detached um, residential units. 
because this is a Euclidean rezoning, there are no site plan or elevations. So I will just jump into showing you all some pictures of the area. So this is not the subject site, but this is on um, Sherrell Street, just north of the subject site, looking southwest or northwest. This is looking directly across the street from the subject site. This is the church parking lot. The church would be this direction. This is north of the subject site. This is Sherrell Street here. This is Ingram Street. So we are looking south, and this is just one of the, giving you some an idea of what the character of the area is like. This is looking south on Sherrell Street. You can see the vacant lot here, and then this is the subject site. Again, this is looking east. The subject site is here, and this is the vacant parcel to the north of it. This is looking east directly at the subject site. This is moving south away. You can see the vacant parcel. You can see a corner of the community center there. There is a direct on view of the community center south of the subject site. And this is a view of the church across from the subject site. How old is that community center? Is that the is, is that the historic one that's down it there? It is historic. I'm not sure how old it is, though, but it is a um, historic local landmark. Okay. It's called the um, Old St. Mark's Community Aid Center. Um, you also have the commercial bank building that is within the vicinity, too, which is historic. I that think is. it might be one of the oldest uh, structures in the, in the area, I think. Yeah, there's a right there. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Development yes, coordination. Um, and compliance staff reviewed the application and find the request to be inconsistent with the development pattern in the built environment in the immediate area. The requested RM18 zoning district would allow for a development of up to three units, which would be located in the block surrounded by the RS50 zoning district. So staff's main concern with this was that while you do have a mix of industrial uses here, this block on Sherrell Street between um, south of Ingram and Idaho Street once you go south of the community center, it's all residential single family detached, with recognized under the RS50 zoning district. Staff did have concern that picking this parcel here and moving it to a residential multifamily district could open up this block to residential multifamily, and that is um, hence the inconsistency from staff. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Uh, I just is 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 the point to just vest what's currently there? Um, I'm honestly not sure if it's the best was currently there. I looked at the parcel a little bit and tried to figure out whether it was multifamily or not. I well, only saw it, one mailbox and I couldn't find more than one electrical hookup, so I assumed that it was a single family, not multifamily. Oh, okay. But I could I could be wrong. I have okay. not asked applicant. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Thank you very much, sir. Applicant, please come up and state your name. Uh, Ruth Padilla. Um, so it's we're not trying to change anything we're just trying to get the bottom it's already been it's been like that since we've owned it so we're just trying to make it a multi-family so we can get a family member to live downstairs so we're not you know we're not trying to are you going to be demolishing or no or no it's staying just like it is right now nothing's changing how long have you is that your primary residence yes how long have you lived there um about five years i think okay. somewhere around five years okay but i know before that the previous owner lived there and it was like that when he lived there as well okay. so yes ma'am so is it divided already as two? Yes, it's units. it's yes, okay. it's been like that since the day we bought it. Okay, so you so, are looking to vest this yes, property yes. to for its the, the current use. Correct. But you're not going to do a demolition. No, 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 no. It's it's just like it is. There's it's already um, an apartment downstairs. So we're just trying to make it Informative. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Legal. So, um, so anyway, that's you know we're not trying to knock it down. We're not trying to do anything, change anything. Everything is already there. So, thank you very much. Anything okay. else? Uh, no. All right. Public comment. Yes, ma'am. Miss Pointer, please state your name. Good evening, Stephanie Pointer. Um, my new friend Ruth here. Um, so I did do a site visit, and um, there are quite a few houses that are the same style as hers down in that area. 
Um, and I know that there are quite a few of them that are being illegally used as Airbnbs top and bottom. So, I, I, but I don't want to be a snitch. But she's trying to do the right thing and to legalize it, what she's already got. Um, I, I thought it was funny that he said that they could do three units on that, but when I did the math, it was only two, which made it totally okay with me because this is not creating new, no, this is no new density in the coastal high hazard area. So in my opinion, I think that this is kind of a no brainer and how it's inconsistent, except because there's nothing around it. I mean, both lots on either side of them are vacant. So um, there's all kinds of people down there doing illegal activities. And this lady did this herself, which is not easy. I've done an SU1, but there's no way I'd want to do a rezoning by myself. So congratulations, Ruth. Y'all have a good evening. Council member Clendenin. So staff, um, this is one of the things that I understand that the, what they're trying to do is, appears to be reasonable, but my, my question is for future use. If we were to approve this, there's nothing stopping either the existing owner or a future owner from tearing it down and building more density there, correct? Correct. So this is, this is actually building in an opportunity to build, with, by your calculation, three units on this piece of property, and there's nothing stopping them if we approve this tonight. Yes, sir. Is there, is there another resolution to the, the situation with the existing use? Not that I'm aware of, to be honest. Thank you. No. I was That's why I specifically asked how long that person lived there. Yeah. They but demolish I, it. But but I, again, it's it's not it's not about the her, yeah. it's not about the current occupant or the current yeah. intention. We it's the next the, ne the next bad actor can come in and and and, yeah. and build three units and and if, change the character of that of that block. If it is any comfort. It's only wait wait wait. Three doors. You have to come up. You have to come up and state your name so again. So the reason why they think it's three because the upstairs. Well, no, they don't think it's three. It's just saying the future. If, if this if this property was demolished, uh -huh. somebody could come in and build three units. If we got if we granted the zoning that you've requested, a future owner, either yourself or a future owner, could demolish the existing property and build three units on that property. Is that correct? Jennifer Malone, Planning Commission staff. The future land use of residential 35, when you do the math of 35 dwelling units an acre, would allow consideration of three dwelling units. Right. With the future land use. Now the zoning. Uh, the current zoning that they have right now, I don't believe allows that. But the, you can't, we can't take, we can't do anything with the future land use. This area has been planned residential multifamily, 35. I'm sorry, it's just residential 35. I was mixing up future right. land use and zoning yeah. terms, but residential 35, okay. which is a pretty dense future land use category. Right, exactly. In the coastal mm -hmm. high, ha high hazard area, on a block that is developed completely different and inconsistent with that. And I just want to point out Jennifer Mullen, Planning Commission staff, I would have to go back at the historical maps and look, but the Coastal High Hazard Area has changed over the years and it, it has expanded. It's going so to continue the planners, to expand. <laughs> yeah, and this, and this map, was this has probably been this way since the, the 1980s, I would imagine. I don't know if it was in the Coastal High Hazard Area when the planners back then designated this residential 35. Right, okay, thank you. That, that's why I, I think that staff's advice on this is, is, is proper and consistent because of the potential future development. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Is I there anybody else that wishes to speak for public comment? Any other questions or comments from council? If not, may I have a motion to close? So moved. We have a motion from council member Miranda, second from? Second. From? Council member Hertek, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Council member Clendenin, would you like to read this or would you, or are you gonna pass? Uh, I, I mean, I would, I would be, I'd be mad if it didn't last, I'll pass. So. Council member Hertek? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I will read this because uh, for me, just vesting one property doesn't mean that we have to approve future um, zoning for the same in the area. And this to me is keeping the housing stock that we already have. So file number REZ 2370, ordinance being presented for first reading consideration, an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 7212 South Cheryl Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RS50 residential single family to RM18 residential multifamily providing an effective date. Second. We have a motion from council member Hertak. We have a same council member uh, Miranda. There was no revision sheet or anything on this, correct? Yes, no. no, all right. Uh, roll call vote. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Clendenin? I think this is the first time I'm going to be the sole no, so no. Mm -hmm. well, Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried with Clendenin voting no. 
Second reading and adoption will be held on January 11th, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. located at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. Item number six, yes, sir. Yes, uh, agenda item number six is REZ 2395, a request to rezone 3616 West Ballast Point Boulevard from PD to PD for restaurant drive in. Um, I do have a revised revision sheet for this one as well. Um, the applicant has been given this, and I have copies for city. Jennifer Malone, Planning Commission staff. We are in the South Tampa Planning District in evacuation zone B in the inner bay south of Gandy neighborhood. As Mr. Thomas just mentioned, we are um, along South Del Mabry Highway. Uh, we have a drive through restaurant to the south. We have the Home Depot. We have some uh, self-storage in the area. And then, of course, residential as we move away from our, of our corridor. Future land use is community mixed use 35. That's a commercial future land use, um, typically promotes mixed use, but can also have single use development. So the north and um, west of the site is urban mixed use 60, more intensive future land use category, and then residential 10 or single family detached future land use category to the east of the site. We did find this consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, this is well below the maximum intensity that can be considered under the plan. It's only developing in an FAR of 0 0.04. This uh, land use category can consider all the way up to a 2.0. So it's it's very it's only about 19% of their um, of their overall development. Um, so we did find it consistent uh, with with that. Um, we found that the design was consistent with the comprehensive plan policies um, with the pedestrian connectivity internal to the subject site. And um, the, we found that it was also comparable and compatible with the surrounding area and consistent with that development pattern anticipated under the Community Mixed Use 35 Future Land Use category. I am available for any questions. Any Thank questions you. for Ms. Malone? Nope. All right. Yes, sir. Go ahead. As Jen noted, the site's on South Del Mabry Highway um, and West Ballast Point Boulevard. Along South Del Mabry Highway, you have commercial uses, a um, mix of commercial intensive and commercial general uses. As Jen noted, there is an existing drive through restaurant just south of the subject site. Um, to the west of the subject site, you do have a large box store retail, and then you do have some multifamily and retail north of the subject site. Directly to the west of the subject site, you do have um, city-owned property that I do believe is used for stormwater. Um, and then just to the other side of that, you have a tennis court and some vacant land that is owned by the church. Then as you move farther east, you move into the single family detached neighborhood. This is the site plan provided by the applicant. So um, as Jen mentioned, they are um, proposing a rather small development. The applicant is proposing a 950 square foot drive through coffee shop. Um, the coffee shop would not have anyone actually entering it other than the employees, just the, um, uh, or the employees would only be entering it, not any customers. The site does have a current PD zoning district on it that previously approved the subject site for a drive through restaurant use. However, the current proposed site plan could not be achieved through sub change of the um, current approved PD, so the applicant had to come in for a new one. Uh, the building is oriented towards South Del Mabry Highway, um, and the access to the site is provided from West Ballast Point Boulevard. Um, along Del Mabry Highway, there is a walk-up window, which I think you can see a little bit clearer here, so that um, anyone who's not driving can at least walk up to the building and order a drink. Um, the applicant did work with staff, and they did add an additional pedestrian connection along West Ballast Point Boulevard, so that way if any residents from the single-family detached neighborhood do decide to walk to the establishment, they are able to access the site without having to walk through drive aisles. Um, and then additionally, there's a pedestrian connection provided from South Del Mabry Highway as well. Uh, there are four parking spaces required, and the applicant is providing eight. The max building height proposed is 24 feet. And I'll show you some elevations now.
So this would be the elevation looking towards South Del Mabry Highway. This is your east elevation, south, and north. I'll walk you through some pictures on the site now. So this would be looking directly at the site. The site is currently utilized for a car wash. So directly behind this picture would be South Del Mabry Highway. And you can see the existing drive-through use here. This is looking east along West Ballast Point Boulevard. The subject site is here. This is internal to the subject site. There you can see the existing stormwater retention pond and then the city owned parcel is here. This is looking west from West Ballast Point Boulevard. This is South Del Mabry Highway. The subject site is over here. This is looking north, Del Mabry Highway here. The strip retail center and the multifamily north of the subject site. This is from the existing drive through restaurant south of the subject site. That is their drive aisle leaving. And then this is looking south on West Ballast Point Road. You can kind of see the stormwater retention back here. And then the existing restaurant on the other side. And then lastly, this is looking south on South Del Mabry Highway at the intersection of Ballast Point Boulevard um, and Del Mabry Highway. Let me get the site plan back for you. Here is the site plan. Development coordination and compliance staff reviewed the application and find it to be consistent with the land development code. The proposed PD um, provides a more desirable living and working environment by placing the building close to South Del Mabry Highway with vehicular use area in the rear and sides of the building. If city council approves the application, modifications to the site plan as shown on the submitted revised revision sheet must be completed between first and second reading. I'm available for any questions. Thank you very much. So this is across the street from the old high line. Yep. Yep. Y'all are, are too young to remember. Someone's yes, running out, but I don't yeah, get the yeah. score. Please state your name. Good evening, Council. Alex Shaler, 400 North Ashley Drive, for the record. As Sam mentioned, I am here on behalf of a commercial redevelopment. Um, I'm joined by our civil engineer, Bob, with the Development Services, Ricky Pederica, our arborist with Dark Moss, and my colleague, Tyler Hudson. Um, I won't spend a ton of time going back over this location. It is directly across from the Home Depot. Um, I would like to mention Dale Mabry as an arterial roadway. It's a little over half an acre site, and as you saw through the photos, there is currently a car wash there today. Sam also went into a little bit of a background on what the site is it's currently zoned for. So while it is exists as a car wash today, it was rezoned back in 2018 for a little over 2,000 square foot Arby's. Um, I have the site plan on the screen because I want to compare it to our proposed development site plan in a second. But as you can see, that access is off of Ballast Point, which is how it is today, stormwater pond in the southeast corner. The building's right in the middle of the site with circulation around it. Um, what we are proposing is to shrink the building, rotate it, shift it closer to Dale Mabry to get that front edge along the roadway with all of our parking tucked back behind the building. We're keeping the same access point off of Ballast Point. Stormwater Pond remains the same down in the southeast corner. So not a ton of changes to the actual application, as Sam mentioned. We couldn't do this via subchange, but we feel this plan is relatively similar to what is approved today. The one that is approved is on the left. Our proposed plan is there on the right. These are some color renderings, um, so you guys can see this alluding to what is coming here. Um, for those of you who have been out west, Dutch Rose has kind of a cult following out there. They've transitioned into the Florida market, and this will be their first establishment in Tampa. And staff did find this application fully consistent, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the waivers that we're requesting. We have two waivers in regards to landscaping. The first is that we are shrinking this internal parking island a bit down to 5.5 feet. And we felt it was very important to keep this parking internal to its own little area and that it doesn't back up into the queue. For those of you who have been to the Dunkin' Donuts on Kennedy, you're very aware of the cluster that it can provide when your parking spaces are backing up into the drive through queue. Um, so we felt like that was, that was a worthy modification to make this specific parking layout work. Um, our second one is a bit unique. Um, we do, we're requesting a buffer reduction from 10 feet to zero feet. I will note, we do have 10 feet in width along that buffer. 
there's a city wastewater easement that runs through there that's 10 feet wide. We are not sure that we can physically plant in that buffer given the sanitary sewer pipe underground. If we can, we will, but we wanted to be conservative and, and go ahead and request that. As Sam mentioned, um, there is a, the church owns the property to the east. Their retention backs up to our property and the facilities are further east. So there's still going to be sizable distance between the church owned property and our property from a buffering standpoint. I did meet with the Gandhi Civic Association last week um, to introduce the project and answer questions, and Stephanie wrote a letter for me before she left that she wanted me to read out loud. Um, Tampa City Council, I support REZ 2395. Um, this project is exciting to the south of Gandhi community. The Dutch Bros Coffee will be a welcome addition to our community. Respectfully, Stephanie Pointer. All and with that, um, I will conclude the presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions or comments? Even when Ms. Pointer's not here, Ms. Pointer is She's here. still here, I know. <laughs> she, she apologized for leaving right before my case. I said, it's, it's fine, I'll read it out loud. <laughs> All good presence. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right, any questions or comments from the council? No? no? Do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on this project? This is item number six. Motion closed. We have a motion closed from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Council Member Clendenin. I move uh, ordinance being presented for uh, first reading consideration and ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 3616 West Ballast Point Boulevard in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning districts, classifications, PD plan development to PD plan development restaurant, drive in providing an effective date with revision sheet. We have a motion from Council Member Clinton. Do we have a second? Second from Council Member Miranda. Roll call vote. <coughs> Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Menscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on January 11th, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. Located at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. Next up is... Item number seven, it says application of Ryan Reynolds. I'm not going to ask if that's the actor. Could be, could not be. We'll, we're fair and impartial either way. Here, unless he's coming here to give me a picture and an autograph, I'm not going to. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sir. All right, agenda Very item easy. number seven. Or <laughs> St. Thomas Development Coordination Agenda Item Number 7 is REZ 2397, a request to rezone 2602, 2616 South McDill Avenue and 2008 West Barcelona Street from plan development to plan development for a restaurant and commercial recreational indoor uses. I'll turn it over to Jim with the Planning Commission. Thank you very much. Jennifer Malone with the Planning Commission. We are in South Tampa. We are in Evacuation Zone B. We are just uh, east along the, uh, South McDill Avenue under the Selman Expressway over here. It's these two sites. Um, the, this one, I believe, will be used for parking. Um, and I just want to point out, because it's easy to explain this part, we'll have the aerial up, but the comprehensive plan has a policy specifically encouraging off-site parking in urban settings. So the Planning Commission did find that this was consistent with that comprehensive plan policy, having that off-site parking. Um, as well as uh, retaining some sidewalk infrastructure and pedestrian infrastructure to get to that parking lot. <coughs> Excuse me. The future land use is community commercial 35. That's the red. That allows a variety of um, commercial uses. We have community mixed use 35 to the north, um, residential 20 to the north, and then residential 10 to the north as well. Um, and then the Selman Expressway. This is the residential 83 category and community mixed use 35 to the south. So again, planning commission staff did find that this was consistent with those mixed use corridor policies. The PD is proposing a five foot sidewalk along West Palmyra <coughs> Avenue and retains the existing seven foot sidewalk along West McDill Avenue, which connects to the entrance of the building to help facilitate, facilitate safe and convenient walking to the entrances. Um, and again, that off-site parking in urban settings, you have a specific policy that says that that is encouraged by the comprehensive plan. And because this portion of South McDill Avenue contains commercial uses, we found that this request would not alter the character of the surrounding area and is comparable and compatible with this portion of the Palmacia neighborhood. And as always, I'm avail available for questions. Thank Any you. questions or comments from Ms. Malone? No. Nope. Yes, sir. Go ahead. 
Here is the aerial view of the subject site. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, as you noted, um, McDill Avenue is mainly commercial um, uses. Actually, on the portion of uh, McDill Avenue that you're viewing right now, um, from my research, the only um, residential is directly south of the subject site, which is a townhome development. Other than that, all of McDill Avenue along here is um, commercial uses. Um, the same is true along this portion of West Barcelona Avenue, where the off-site parking is located. It is all commercial uses. Um, as you move to the west of McDill Avenue, you do have a mix of residential single family and single family attached and multifamily. And the same can be true, um, is true north of the site on the other side of Palmyra Avenue. We'll go to the site plan provided by the applicant. Um, so the applicant is proposing a 9,060 square foot restaurant and a 3,464 square foot arcade and existing buildings. Uh, the previous PD, um, REZ 1346, was approved on the site for a restaurant and retail bakery. Um, the only changes proposed as part of this rezoning for the, um, is the new use of commercial recreational indoor, the outdoor patio that is here. And then, as Jen mentioned, they're proposing a new sidewalk along Palmyra Avenue to connect to the existing one that's already there to provide a connection all the way down Palmyra to South McDill Avenue. Other than that, the site is largely re remaining the same as it exists today. You do have the off-site parking here, and as Jen mentioned, pedestrian connections are provided from that off-site parking to safely access the restaurant and the proposed um, commercial recreational indoor use and the other building. And there's also pedestrian connections provided um, from South McDill Avenue to those buildings as well. And I'll show you some pictures from the site. Um, the applicant did not provide elevate or did not provide elevation since they're using the existing building. Um, instead of going through their pictures, I'll just show you all mine. So this is viewing that um, off-site parking lot. This is looking south on Barcelona. This is looking from the parking lot across the street. You can see some of the commercial uses there. So this would be looking north. And this is facing east. You're looking towards Bayshore at that point. Um, you can see the site here. This is looking west on Barcelona, so now you'd be looking towards McDill Avenue. Here's the subject site, the off-site parking, and there are those townhomes that I mentioned that are along McDill Avenue. So this is looking east directly at the subject site. Um, this is the building that will remain a restaurant. And then moving south on McDill, this is the restaurant that will, or the building that will be used as the commercial recreational space. And this is looking directly across the street. This is looking west across McDill from the subject site. You can see a restaurant here and a commercial retail strip center. This is looking back behind the subject site at the parking. So this would be the recreational facility here, the restaurant there. And this is looking from Palmera Avenue. This is where that sidewalk will go to connect the subject site to the McDill Avenue all the way along Palmera Avenue. There's a band across the street at the hotel, and we've been oh, practicing. Oh, okay. Oh, well, a little entertainment. Yeah. Um, it's definitely not for you. Development no. coordination and compliance staff reviewed the application and find the request to be consistent with the land development code. The applicant proposes to reuse the existing buildings and is making minimal physical changes to the site. The addition of indoor commercial recreational use is not anticipated to create any adverse impacts. If council approves the application, modifications to the site plan shown on the revision sheet must be completed between first and second reading. I'm available for any questions. Any questions? All righty. Yes, sir, Mr. Hudson. Yes. Community Council, Tyler Hudson, 400 North Ashley Drive. It's almost 6.30, so we're going to get going. Um, this is really a story about how little things are changing. This is the Datsdo restaurant. Um, I represent the landlord. Uh, it is, both buildings are leased to a single operator. Um, right now, Dats and Doe both operated as, as sort of two restaurants. <coughs> Under the PD zoning, technically, Doe was a retail bakery with, quote, accessory dining. That's now going to be a, um, I'm not at liberty for the tenant to reveal the concept yet, but it, it's going to be related to the restaurant use, think like ping pong tables, video games, things like that. The Dats building is going to be repurposed as a restaurant with a different operator. 
that's that's it. That's literally all the change there is. I'm I'm happy that's to answer. Whole presentation. That's yeah. I, I, it's consi yeah. it's consistent. I, I heard. I'm trying to get to 7:30. That's that's really it. I'm I'm happy to answer any questions you all might have. And we have the for revision staff sheet as well, correct, sir? Revision we'll sheet. We'll do all the revision sheet changes. Yes. All right. Any we questions do, do, for the applicant? Well. Nope. Do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number seven? Everybody that's registered is. Well, most of them are here. So, anybody in the audience wish to speak on item number seven? Motion closed. Second. We have motion closed from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Council Member Carlson, would you mind reading item number seven with the revision sheet? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'd like to move um, f f uh, number seven, file number REZ 23 97, ordinance being presented for first reading consideration and ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2602 and 2616 South McDill Avenue and 3008 West Barcelona Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification PD plan development to PD plan development restaurant and commercial recreational indoor providing effective date. Second. We have a motion from Council Member Carlson, second from Council Member Miranda. Let's get a roll call vote. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on January 11th, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. located at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very I'm much. Thank office. you very much. Yes, sir. Item number eight. Yes. Agenda item number eight is REZ 23102, a request to rezone 2006 South Havana Avenue, units A and B, from residential single family 50 to residential multifamily 12. I'll turn it over to Jim with the Planning Commission. Jennifer Malone <clears throat> with your Planning Commission. This is in the South Tampa Planning District. Evacuation Zone B. We are um, near the Selman Expressway again along South Havana Avenue. Uh, here's the subject site. We have a variety of residential uses in this area. Um, all, all sorts of residential uses really, but it's primarily residential to the side of the Selman Expressway. Uh, we do have Palmacia Park to the south of the site right here. And the Palmacia Park is recreational open space to the south, that's the green. We have residential 10, but then the subject site and these uh, properties to the north are residential 20. And we have residential 35 to the northeast. So residential 20 um, is a little higher than residential 10, but it's still looking for, you know, attached single family type types of uses at a slightly higher density. Uh, so the Planning Commission staff did find this consistent with the plan. The requested residential multifamily 12 zoning district can be considered under the residential 20 future land use plan category. Um, we did find that this supports many of the policies in the plan as it relates to housing the city's population. Um, the plan encourages new housing to ensure that an adequate supply is available for it to meet the needs of Tampa's present and future population. Um, and we found that this would be comparable and compatible with the surrounding development pattern, providing that variety of residential housing types consistent with that underlying future land use ca category. So I'm available for any questions. Thank any you. Any questions for Ms. Malone? Nope. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Go ahead. We'll start out with the aerial of the subject site. You can see the subject site here outlined in red. Um, this is one of the cases where I almost think the future land use map um, shows the development pattern a little more accurately than what the zoning map does. So while this entire area here is recognized almost entirely under the residential single family um, 50 zoning district, you do have two planned development zoning districts just north of the subject site. Both of those are approved for multifamily developments. Um, and then it's kind of hard to see with the projection here, but you might see a few red dots that I've put on the map specifically right here, and then some more up here, and then throughout the site as well. Um, this portion of South Havana Avenue from West Strode to San Andristro, along the east side, is all residential multifamily, with the exception of the one parcel down here on the south, which is single family detached. Um, then north of Strode, you have a little bit of a change of single family detached with one multifamily, and then you move up here, and then on the east side, it's another stretch of multifamily development. 
then throughout this neighborhood, you do have a mix of, sing you do have a lot of single family. It's, I would say it's majority single family, but there are quite a few single fam or multi-family developments that look like they have characteristics of the 20s that are dotted throughout this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So the precedent, while it is a residential single family 50 zoning, the precedent of multifamily is established in the neighborhood and has been for a while. Um, because this is a Euclidean rezoning, um, I'll just show you some pictures from around the area because there is no site plan and elevations. So this is looking east from South Havana Avenue directly at the subject site. This is south of the subject site. This is the one single family detached house that I mentioned that was in that section of South Havana between the two streets. It's kind of hard to see the single family detached home is back behind all the landscaping. So now we're moving north on Havana Avenue. So this is one of those multifamily, this is actually the multifamily that was approved under the PD directly north of the subject site. And you can see the four mailboxes there. So we're continuing moving north on Havana. Here's some more of that multifamily, this one and this one as well. And this would be if you were looking west across the street from the subject site. Um, the houses on that side of Havana are not oriented towards Havana. They're actually oriented to their cross streets instead so they don't face Havana Avenue, and you, you can see that here, and then that's the back side with their garage. And then this is looking down Havana Avenue, we're looking north. This would be the single family detached lot, and then all these other lots along this portion are the multifamily, and then you have the single family on this side of the pro on this side of Havana Avenue that faces the opposite direction. It doesn't actually face Havana <laughs> Avenue. Aerial back up. So development coordination and compliance staff reviewed the application and find the request consistent with the development pattern and the built environment in the immediate area. The requested RM12 zoning district allows for a maximum of two dwelling units to be considered on the site if the subject site meets all other land development regulations. I'm available for any questions. Any questions? Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. Do we have an applicant for item number eight? Uh, yes, sir. Please state your name. Uh, I'm Chris Colnitis. Uh, I represent uh, Tiny Pearl 2 LLC that is uh, trying to develop on this property. Um, honestly, first time doing this, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. I think they did the whole rundown. Really, we purchased what was a duplex, um, and we did not do our due diligence with what we believed at the time. And now, as we try to expand and just put on a small addition to the back just to add a room, um, we. Uh, as we went through permitting, we realized we had this hiccup and are now just trying to get it um, remedied for the nonconformity that it was grandfathered in initially. So, not really trying to change much to it. So, you're coming into compliance? Yes, she's coming into compliance. You did a good job. Yeah, she's coming Very into compliance. Very good. That's all you need. Any all questions right. for the applicant? Nope. All right, is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number eight? Motion closed. We have a motion closed from Councilmember Miranda with the second Councilmember Clendenin. All in favor? All right. Aye. Councilmember uh, Miranda. Thank you, Chairman. I move by item number eight, file REZ 23-01. Order is being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance rezoning property general vicinity of 2006 South Havana Avenue, units A and B in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification, RS 50 single family, residential single family to RM slash 12 residential multifamily providing an effective date along with the revision sheet. We have a motion from Council Member Miranda, Senator Council Member Clendenin. Let's get a roll call vote. Thank you. Carlson? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Meniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on January 11th, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. Located at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. Item number nine. San yes, Thomas sir. Development Coordination. Agenda item number nine is REZ 23103, a request to rezone 2816 East Corrine Street from residential multifamily 16 to residential multifamily 24. I'll turn it over to Jim with the Planning Commission. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. We are in the Palmetto Beach neighborhood right now um, in the Central Tampa Planning District. So here I have an aerial. We have DeSoto Elementary School right here. We have some industrial uses to the east of the site. 
and residential housing kind of in this immediate vicinity where my finger is to the north, directly to the east, um, <clears throat> et cetera. So we have Clark Street and then Quarian Street kind of loops down. Um, the future land use is residential 35. To the south, that is recreational open space. That's the park on Palmetto Beach. And then we have um, residential 20 and then residential 10 to the north. But this whole little block is residential 35. We also have like, some, some light industrial to the east of the site. East of South 30th Street has that industrial pattern. So the request before you to residential multifamily 24 is uh, can be considered in that residential 35 future land use designation. Residential 35 is um, kind of a mid-density for the city. Um, we found that it's uh, this will encourage the city's um, more housing for the city's um, future population. We did find that this was comparable and compatible with the surrounding development pattern. Um, the density is what we anticipate for the residential 35 future land use designation. Um, and it's uh, adjacent to DeSoto Park um, and it can be considered under the, under the future land use. So that concludes my presentation. Thank Any you. Any questions? No? Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Take it away. Ready. We'll start out with the aerial map. Okay, so here's the subject site outlined in red on Coring Street. Um, the area is, has a few mixture of uses um, based on the future land use that Jen showed you. You can kind of see already that you have your industrial general uses here on the other side of um, South 30th Street. Then as you move into the neighborhood, um, this portion right here is recognized under the RM16 zoning district. And then to the south, you have the RM24 zoning district. And then as you move to the west, you do move into the RS50 um, single family area of the subject of the area. Um, directly next to the parcel, I have a few red dots on this map as well, just to try to point out some of the um, multifamily that currently exist in the area. This is kind of similar to our other one that we just looked at, where you do have a mix of single family detached and older stock of multifamily units. Directly next to the parcel, you do have a two unit multifamily development. And then this parcel here is part of DeSoto Elementary that goes almost from here all the way over and consumes most of the block. South of the subject site, you also have DeSoto Park. Um, these red dots here indicate some of the multifamily. You have a more large new multifamily development here that are townhomes in the area. Um, because this is Euclidean, there are no site plans or elevations, so I do have a few pictures to show you. This is looking from Coring Street directly at the subject site here. You have a single-family detached home, and then you have the multifamily to the west of the subject site. This is looking south from the subject site at DeSoto Park. This is looking west at the subject site. You can see the school over in the distance. And this is looking east. You can see the subject site here. And then you can see some of those industrial uses off in the distance in DeSoto Park to the south. There's your aerial map back. Development coordination and compliance staff reviewed the application and find the request to be consistent with the development pattern and the built environment in the immediate area. The consideration of one additional unit on the subject site is consistent with the development pattern of the area, considering directly west of the subject site is a developed parcel with two units, and the neighborhood is developed with single-family attached, semi-detached, and attached uses. Um, and I would like to note that the site can only be considered for two units with the RM, RM24 zoning district. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? Nope. Thank you very much. Applicant, please come up, state your name. Uh, good evening. My name is Dre Hajian, and I'm the owner of the property. Um, the existing zoning for this property are R16. Right now, we can build two units, but because of the size of the property, we need to go to the rezoning. But we are not adding any more trip generation for this property, and I think it will be adequate for us to go ahead and get this rezoning. That's all I got. What, what are you going to build on it? Two units. Okay. Not three, just two. Okay. Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right, any questions for the applicant? Nope. Uh, do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number nine? Vote. 
Uh, there's nobody registered. We have a motion, motion to close from Councilmember Miranda, second from Councilmember Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Councilmember Vieira, would you mind reading item number nine? Sure. Uh, I move an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2816 East Crane Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RM residential multifamily family to RM24 residential multifamily providing an effective date. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Vieira. Do we have a second? Uh, we have a second from Councilmember Miranda. Roll call vote. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Meniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on January 11th, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. Located at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. Thank you. Mr. Brickelmeyer, are all the people that came in, are they going to be speaking? No. Exactly. Just me, but I still need to be sworn. Oh, you do? Yes. All right, we'll get to it when you come up. Yes, sir, go ahead. All righty. Last on the agenda tonight is agenda item number 10, RAZ 23106. A request to rezone 2810 West Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and 2809 West Virginia Avenue from Commercial General, Residential Office 1, and Residential Single Family 50 to PD for Medical Office. I'll turn it over to Jen with the Planning Commission. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission. We're in the Central Tampa Planning District. We're just south of the Hospital of uh, St. Joseph's. Um, West Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard is developed with a variety of medical offices and commercial um, uses that, that support the hospital, a lot of medical offices in this area. Um, and then as one moves south of west of the corridor, there's more, there's even more offices. They're not just along the corridor, they're within the neighborhood and then um, some residential even further south. But that doesn't really start until we get west of St. Isabel Street. So the future land use is res our community mixed use 35 and residential 20. So we have community mixed use 35 along our corridor and the residential 20 is one move south away from the corridor. The blue is public. That's the hospital to the north. And then we have residential 10 to the south as well. So <clears throat> if you can see the highlight on the screen, I did that because thought that it was really important to point out this policy tonight that the in the comprehensive plan LU policy 8.4.1 about permitting office development to infill on <coughs> parcels or redevelop existing parcels essentially in this area so the plan recognized to support the the hospital um, that that it identified this area as redevelopment um, these vacant parcels or redevelopment of non-vacant parcels to, to office uses. So while it's residential 20 and we even have some residential 10, that's why this area is pretty eclectic with the, with the variety of office uses is because of that policy direction. And so we did find that this meets the policy direction of the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. Um, we also found that the development was sensitive to any remaining residential in the area. I think there's one house on this portion of West Virginia Avenue. Um, and so uh, we didn't we found that it would be comparable and compatible with with the surrounding land use pattern And specifically with that policy. So I'm available for any questions. Thank any you questions for Ms. Malone Nope. Thank you very much. Yes, sir uh, Jen did a great job setting up for this um, zoning map by explaining that policy because I think when you look at the zoning map that policy 100% explains how we have kind of what looks like almost like a hodgepodge of different zoning designations here but um, almost all these zoning designations are residential office one or medical office or a PD for a medical office there are a few like that Jen mentioned RS50 districts left in here that haven't been changed over yet but for the most part this almost entire area south of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard is a mix of offices and residential offices and then obviously as you move north of MLK you have St. Joseph's Hospital. So then we'll go to the site plan provided by the applicant. Um, so the applicant is proposing to retain their existing medical office that is currently on MLK Boulevard. So the site currently functions almost exactly as it's depicted here on the site plan. 
the only change that the applicant is really proposing to the site plan is to remove an existing single family detached home at the end of the parcel and replace it with a medical office building. Um, other than that, the site currently functions with access from MLK and also with access from West Virginia Avenue. Um, the building that is proposed on West Virginia Avenue would be 4,680 square feet with a max height of 35 feet. Um, there are 46 parking spaces um, proposed and 46 parking spaces are required. Um, additionally, the applicant is requesting to pay the in lieu fee instead of providing a sidewalk along West Virginia Avenue. Um, they're requesting to do this because, as I don't know if you can see here or not, um, there are three trees along West Virginia Avenue and by paying the in lieu fee, um, these trees can be protected and saved. You said they can be protected and saved. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, that's why, um, that's why they would be requesting the in lieu fee versus putting a sidewalk in. But there are still pedestrian connections provided along here and then pedestrian connections along MLK to provide access to that existing medical office. And this red line is just showing the delineation between the R20 future land use and the RCMU 35 future land use designation. Councilman Pendenza, do you have a question? Yeah, what, what type of trees? What the um, I believe they are oaks and laurel oaks. Yep, yeah, oaks and laurel oaks. That's good. Enough. And That's good. this one would be a grand tree. Mm. So here are the elevations of the proposed new medical building. And then I'll show you some photos from around the site. So this is along West Virginia Avenue, looking north towards MLK. So you can see their existing drive aisle there. Um, the single family detached home that will be demolished is on the other side of that fence. Here's another look at that drive aisle that currently exists. You can see the existing medical office building up to the north. This is the single family detached home that will be demolished. This building right next to it is also a medical office building. This is looking south on MLK Avenue. This is the existing medical building on site. This is looking south on West Virginia Avenue. This is one of those few single family detached homes that still remain in the area. Um, and this is looking, so if you're looking at that house that I just showed, this would be moving to the west and you can see another <laughs> medical office there. And then this is looking um, east along West Virginia Avenue. Um, this is the subject site here. This is the single family um, detached home that will be demolished for the new medical office building. And this is an existing medical office building on the other side of it. Here is the site plan. Development coordination and compliance staff reviewed the application and find the request to be consistent with the land development code. See findings from transportation related to the request of reduction required distance from the intersection to the collector roadway. Notwithstanding staff's finding of inconsistency, if council approves the application, modifications to the site plan must be completed as shown on the revision sheet between first and second reading. These revisions will not resolve the issue of inconsistency of staff's finding. And that inconsistency stems from the location of this existing drive aisle that is already on West Virginia Avenue. Any questions? Any questions or comments? No? Thank you very much. Mr. Bricklemeyer, please state your name. He's, uh, yeah, and please swear him. Oh, that's right. Swear him. Uh, Clayton Bricklemeyer with Hillward Henderson uh, representing the applicant proud to be participating in what has to be the fastest city council meeting in uh, recorded history um, happy to wrap it up we, I we can speak to anything that anyone has a question to uh, I want to thank staff and we particularly worked you could hear the in lieu fee discussion to, to save the one grand tree in particular and, and uh, you know Ricky worked hard out there on the trees and we actually jogged the driveway if you can see on the site plan to do that as well um, but unless anyone has any questions, we would uh, ask for your approval. Any questions? Nope. All right. Anybody in the public wish to speak for uh, on item number 10? Is there anybody here for public comment? There's nobody registered. Motion to close from Councilmember Miranda, second from Councilmember Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Where did I leave off? Here? Or who? You? Okay. I'm the last one. Yes, ma'am. Chair, I gladly, with pleasure, move the last agenda item of the meeting. 
file number REZ 23-106, an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration, an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2810 West Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and 2809 West Virginia Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification CG commercial general to RO1 residential office and RS50 residential single family to PD plan development office medical providing an effective date. We have a motion from council member uh, Henderson. Second from council member Miranda. Uh, please uh, roll call. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Pertak? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on January 11th, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. Located at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602. That concludes our agenda. All right, I'm going to start off with uh, new business. I recognize Council Chairman Maniscalco. Thank you very much. I'd like to make a motion to present TNI Director Russell Halpert, who is retiring from the city on January 5th, 2024, with a commendation next Thursday, December 21st, 2023. I know. It, it, it was a surprise to me. We have a motion from Chairman Maniscalco, a second from Chair, uh, Councilman Miranda. All those in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much, and uh, happy birthday to Dick Van Dyke, 98 years old. But let me let me tell you why I bring that up, not because we all love him. Because we want to get out of here at 7.30. Yeah, yeah, but in uh, one of the Dick Van Dyke episodes called The Making of a Councilman, he actually ran for city council. So I found that, I found a picture not too long ago, and I go, that's very interesting. So here we are, there's a fun fact for you and uh, why it relates to city council. So there's there's a career uh, yet for you in, in the motion pictures? Is that what no. you're trying to tell us? Mary Poppins. Can you, can you dance? No. Can you sing? No. Thank no. you very you much. You saw in the new Mary Poppins, he jumped up on that table in yeah. his 90s. Isn't Pretty that crazy? amazing. Uh, yeah. I good didn't for, see that. Good for him. All right, Councilmember Moran. I like no, sir. Councilmember Vieira. Uh, just really quick, if I may. Um, I was requested by Miracles of Outreach uh, to do a commendation in honor of their late uh, founder, Tyrone Walker, to be presented to his wife, uh, Michelle Walker, um, to be presented off-site. We have a motion from Council Member Vieira, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, then I motion for Parks and Recreation to report at our April 4th uh, meeting on efforts. This is for um, athletic facilities, at efforts to make our design or our athletic facilities inclusive for people regardless of any abilities. Second. We have a motion from Council Member Vieira, second from Council Member Moran, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Any, Aye. Any, That's it. Anything else, sir? Yes, ma'am? Nothing from me, yes, Chair. Yes, sir? I have one motion. Thank you. A motion for Planning Commission City, <coughs> excuse me. I motion for Planning Commission and City Planning staff to provide a report on January 25th regarding the follow-up actions from the September workshop related to the 2045 Flu future oh, land use update. We have a motion from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Council Member Hertag. Thank you. Um, I'm just kind of uh, cleaning something up. Uh, I made a motion to have staff report on ways to use the $280,000 that was allocated before a TPD grant was received with the goal to keep youth busy with something to do in the evening and weekends. Mm -hmm. I, it is supposed to be scheduled for uh, December 21st, but I want to move it to uh, staff reports on January 25th to go along with the other staff reports related to EBOR and evening youth activities, which is um, CM 23-2100. We have a motion from Council Member Hertag, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Anything else? Nope. Council Member Carlson? Yeah, I just want to say real fast thank you to the staff at uh, Tampa Bay Tech. I took a tour a couple days ago. And um, uh, it is, uh, remember, we've had several entrepreneurs in front of us who went to Tampa Bay Tech, and I wanted to find out what the secret was. They took me a tour of their entrepreneurship program. Incredibly impressive. All the stuff they're doing is impressive. The sad thing, like, the you all who are teachers know this, but uh, something like 30%, about 600 of the students don't have um, kind of permanent place to stay. Many, uh, you know, are staying in hotels and other places. And despite, and many are food challenged, 20 staff members are food challenged, so they have a food bank. And um, uh, 
despite the challenges, those 600 families, the parents and, and kids, found a way to apply to this magnet school because they care so much about their future. And I would just remind everybody during this holiday season, we've got 50,000 families that need homes and we've got a lot of people that have uh, food shortages. So please think of them and, and try to help everybody along in our community. Thank you. I, may I? Yes, just one thing I, I did want to say, somebody that we're, uh, not to get into specifics, but somebody that I think all of us love a great deal, Tanya Lewis, um, just that she's had some medical challenges and, and just our, I think all of our hearts go out to Tanya and just uh, a statement from city council, just telling her that we love her a lot and appreciate all that she does for the city of Tampa. Absolutely. That's all, she's a good woman. Yes, sir, I agree. Mr. Shelby, did you have anything, sir? Yes, I'd like to answer Council Member Carlson's question regarding the continuances from uh, the start of the meeting. Um, the Council's rule does allow for the first continuance to be granted um, without question, if providing certain criteria is met, one of the criteria being, being that they let you know at least, at least a week in advance. Now, if that criteria is not satisfied, and with all subsequent requests for continuances, including the second, the third, or whatever, this is what the rule states. The applicant slash petitioner should be prepared for city council to consider and act upon the item before it. City council may deem the applicant or petition withdrawn if a matter is, probably, is, matter is properly set to be heard and a continuance is requested after having been continued on two previous occasions. So it's council's discretion, ultimately. Thank you very much. Can I have a motion to receive a file? We have a motion to receive a file from Councilmember Miranda, second from Councilmember Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Six.